You're listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be speaking with Mr. Mike Rhea. He's founder of Protodyme. It's a contract skunk works lab specializing in minimizing the risk of drug development by avoiding bias, premature specialization, and providing clients a universe of possibilities in, in which a drug could be brought to market. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Mike Rhea, and thank you so much for taking the time. No, thank you for the invitation. Now, of course, I did tell our listeners that you're the founder of uh, Protodyme. Give us a bit of your professional background. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, what Protodyme does. Uh, of course, I said it's a contract skunk works lab. Um, and tell us a little bit about how your journey led you to found Protodyme. Great question. And I might ramble on the way, Neil. But, Not um, a problem. So I have, I've run a company called Idea Pharma for about 20 years. And um, this is what you might call it strategic consultancy. So we provide advice to people who are looking to bring molecules from early phase through to market. Um, but it stops at giving advice. And um, about 11 years ago, we created uh, something called the Pharmaceutical Innovation Index, which was a way for us to publicly ask the question of if you gave the same drug to two different companies at the beginning of phase one, would they be equally successful? And kind of everyone knew that the answer was no. No one knew why, uh, so we set out to uh, you know, you know, ask that question, and we produced a ranking of the top 30 pharma companies for their ability to take products through pipelines and take them to successful launches. But we were looking for, you know, the underlying reasons, um, and that helped us become a better strategy group. And we often give our clients lots of options for you know ways to take you know, interesting assets to market. Um, you know, quicker, bigger, you know, easier in terms of risk. Uh, and one of the things that we saw was that we would present a range of options and most people would go for the, the kind of the stuff in the middle, right? The, the easy to say yes to ideas. Uh, and mostly they were doing that because they were missing evidence for the more interesting stuff, the stuff that would sit at the edges, the stuff that maybe no one had done before. Um, and we realized actually collecting evidence for interesting ideas is hard and needs a specialist focus. It needs someone who you know, is organized to, to, to go looking for interesting insights quickly instead of you know, deep and meaningful insights slowly, which is really where the, the CRO industry is, is focused. So we, we put Protodyme along to the side of idea and said, look, you know, these are uh, complementary uh, organizations um, the industry itself, I think, needs a, a disruption in the early phase. I think it's it's been focused on, you know, getting on with whatever they first decided the drug was going to be, rather than finding out where best to target the drug. So that's really where Protodyme fits is in, you know, changing the way we make decisions in early phase. In my mind, a disease exists, a condition. A drug is developed, mm -hmm. it goes through trial, and I, I have a hard time seeing why that drug would have a, a problem getting to market or why there would need to be huh. multiple yeah. channels. Uh, I mean, supply and demand, right? You're sick, here's a drug, no-brainer. What's wrong with that picture? Um, it's how it should be. Um, so I, I think you're right to have that, uh, that, that, that worldview. I think what we've done is overcomplicate some things. I think... Um, Let's, let's take a, an idea of a drug which might work uh, via a mechanism which is anti-inflammatory. And we, we all think we understand inflammation. Well, the first job that that company has to do is to decide what, where that molecule might fit. And you go, well, there's a range of diseases which are inflammatory in nature. There are autoimmune diseases. There's you know, all, all kinds of stuff, I mean, up to, up to and including COVID. So then you've got a choice to make about which indication to, to, to look at. And then you might have to decide, well, is it about, you know, uh, helping me with the pain? Is it about helping me, me with joint damage? If it helps with the prevention of damage to joints, how would I know? Um, you know, what kind of benefits would that bring to patients? Is it better than what's out there already? If it is, then it, both of those things, you know, w can I find those patients? Would, uh, would I make enough money from launching it? So there's a, there's a thousand decisions to make about, um, about where to point you know, any molecule that you come up with, um, or it works the other way around that you said, which is, you know, you've got a disease like rheumatoid arthritis, let's go looking for a better way to, to, to solve it or cure it or treat it. Um, in which case then you've got a, you know, couple of thousand molecules to look through to decide which are the, which are the right ones to do it. So 
I think all of this, you know, to your point and, and to our philosophy, it's about making really good decisions based on evidence that you have or don't have about what to, what to take to market. And then you know, some of the decision is about, you know, how much money do we want to make? How quickly do we want to do it? How much risk do we want to take that this isn't, you know, the, the kind of blockbuster that we, uh, that, we, that we wished it would be? Obviously, there are a, a team of people that analyze these different avenues, these different decisions. Explain what Skunk Works is and how it's involved in making these better drug developmental decisions as far as marketing goes. Yeah, so uh, we borrowed the idea of Skunk Works from the aviation industry and kind of McDonnell Douglas, uh, you know, famously had a, a group of people that had put in a building, you know, um, it was actually downstream of a of a uh, of a you know sewage works which gained at the name skunk works uh, originally but this was you know typically a loosely structured bunch of people that you put together outside of the organizational structures you know and in our industry we have some pretty big companies we've got people with 30,000 employees and you know it's hard to move 30,000 employees to be agile so the the goal of skunk works is to is to deliver operational agility, you know, uh, you create what is called an affinity group, so people that want to look at a, uh, an opportunity together. Um, they don't care what the building looks like. They don't care if they have, you know, free free lunches, you know, all those kind of things. They're just, you know, they, they unite, united by purpose. Mm -hmm. But the big thing for pharma is it is about looking for clues and looking for insights and having that team, uh, you know, think harder and with more energy about the opportunity for a particular drug. So that, that, that's really why we've kind of, you know, borrowed that term skunk works for Protodyne, um, it, it, you know, is it's, it's to say that rather than try to fit all drugs into one operating structure, mm -hmm. it's let's build an operating structure for this one while we're still looking for opportunity. Is there ever anyone inside of this uh, Skunk Works team that their sole purpose is to basically reject any idea that comes along in order to foster more thought? Um, reject with style, I think. Would be uh, the, um, so I think I mean one of the things that's broken in R&D typically is the time it takes to get to a decision. I mean, I've written about three second answers versus three month answers. You know, we've set up our organizations to give us good answers in three months instead of quick answers or good answers in three seconds. Mm -hmm. um, so someone internally is, is meant to take an idea and, and to listen to it and give it back with spin. So, you know, ideas aren't all good or all bad. I think they have, you know, uh, uh, you know, they have good parts and they have bad parts. And we at Idea and a Prototype have this idea that yeah, a better idea is waiting to be stimulated by your idea. So, you know, whatever idea you throw us, if we can add it back with yes, but, or what if, then it's a better idea. Um, and of course, you know, as we just discussed, we're looking for things that might be clinically better. Are we looking for things that might have a commercial opportunity that no one else has seen before or something that the, the regulator has said yes to that no one else has seen before. So we, we tend to talk about this as opportunity seeking behavior. Um, and our industry has largely created risk mitigating behavior in early phase. So, you know, it's easy to be someone that rejects ideas if your goal is risk mitigation. If your goal is opportunity seeking, you really do want someone that looks at those ideas and rather than killing them is, 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 is maybe twisting them back and, you know, delivering it back with top spin, uh, back to the, uh, back to the team members. Give us a website, Mike, if you would, where our listeners can learn much more about Protodyme and about Skunk's work. Sure. So uh, the, the easiest way is to go through uh, protodyme.co. So that's P-R-O-T-O-D-I-G-M.co. Um, or just Google Protodyme. They'll, uh, they'll, they'll find us pretty quickly uh, doing it that way. We're, uh, 
we're in a sort of end of one out on, on the left of the industry at the moment. Well, Mike, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for this information, and hopefully we'll get an opportunity to uh, have another conversation. Neil, I've really appreciated it. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Mike Rhea, founder of Protodyme. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com health professional radio.